Hello everyone, welcome back. Now we will see the IEEE 802.15.1 the Bluetooth. As usual, we will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number 1, we will know the basics of Bluetooth. Outcome number 2, we will understand PicoNet and ScatterNet. Outcome number 3, we will see the Bluetooth adapters. Outcome number 4, we will understand the pros and cons of Bluetooth. And the final outcome, we will know about the blue snuffing attack in Bluetooth. Before we dive into the topic called Bluetooth, let's see a situation. Suppose you have some data in your mobile phone and your friend needs that data. How will you send that data? Of course, you have so many ways to send the data. You can send those data as an attachment in the email or you can send the data through WhatsApp. But if you say you are going to send the data over email or WhatsApp, it obviously needs the internet in order to send your data to the destination that is your friend's mobile phone. Rather, if we have Bluetooth adapters on both the devices, we can simply create a personal area network and we can start transferring our data from one device to another device. The important point is that we don't need internet connectivity for doing this. So Bluetooth is so handy, you know. And that's the topic of the day. Bluetooth is a wireless technology standard used for exchanging data between fixed and mobile devices over short distances using short wavelength ultra high frequency radio waves in the ISM radio band from 2.4 GHz to 2.485 GHz. And this Bluetooth is for building personal area networks. We have already seen some types of network which is LAN, MAN, WAN. And here is one of the types which is called as personal area network. And Bluetooth uses the ISM radio frequency bands. ISM means industrial, scientific and medical frequency bands that is from 2.4 GHz to 2.485 GHz. Why Bluetooth? It was originally conceived as a wireless alternative to RS-232 data cables. We know RS-232 data cables are the serial data cables that is used for establishing serial communication between devices. So Bluetooth was originally conceived as an alternative to that RS-232 data cables. Why the name Bluetooth? Actually, Bluetooth is a wireless technology named after Harald Bluetooth based on an analogy that Bluetooth technology would unite devices the way Harald Bluetooth united the tribes of Denmark into a single kingdom. Let's see more about this Bluetooth. This Bluetooth is specified by an industry consortium called the Bluetooth SIG. SIG means Special Interest Group. This Bluetooth SIG is an industry consortium. It specifies the entire suite of protocols going beyond the link layer to define the application protocols. So this complete suite of protocols are called as profiles and this is for a range of applications. Suppose if you need an application, we have a separate profile for every application. Let's see two examples here. So there is a profile for synchronizing a PDA with a personal computer. PDA means personal digital assistant. So there is a separate profile for linking or synchronizing a personal digital assistant with a personal computer. We will see another profile. Another profile gives a mobile computer access to a wired LAN. Suppose if we want to connect a mobile computer to a wired LAN, we have a separate profile for achieving this. And what about the network that is created by Bluetooth? The basic Bluetooth network configuration is called as a PicoNet. So this PicoNet is very important as far as a Bluetooth is concerned. Let's see an example PicoNet. So here is an example PicoNet where we have a master node which is connected with many nodes and these nodes are slave nodes. So in a PicoNet, we will have only one master node, some slave nodes. So this is an example Bluetooth PicoNet. Let's continue dealing with the Bluetooth. Now this PicoNet consists of a master device and up to seven slave devices. So when we say there can be only one master node in a PicoNet, but to the maximum of seven slave nodes in a PicoNet. Any communication is between the master and the slave. So for example, so no two slave nodes can communicate with each other. So any communication will be between a master and a slave. And the slaves do not communicate directly with each other. I have already explained this. Suppose if this PDA device wants to communicate with this mobile phone and this is also an active device and this is also an active device. Though these two are active, these two slave devices cannot communicate with each other directly. So they have to communicate with each other through the master device only. 
So slaves do not communicate with each other and the slave can be parked that is it can be set to an inactive low power state suppose if the slave is not at all communicating for a certain period of time in order to save the power that slave node can be parked that is it can be set to an inactive mode so that it enters into the low power state normally these bluetooth devices are taking their power from the batteries in order to sparingly use the batteries we are required to put the device in a low power state if the device is not active and that is why we have certain states in the bluetooth configuration so far we have dealt with the basic piconet configuration let's now see what is piconet and scatternet here is the piconet and scatternet suppose if we take this is a piconet where we have a master and we have some slaves this master can scatter up to 7 slave devices and this is an example piconet We have so many piconets, and the collection of these piconets are called as the scatternet. Now, if we take about this node, this node can be a master as well as a slave. How? Let's take this node. This node can be a master node as well as a slave node. In this piconet, this can be a master node. In another piconet, it can be a slave node. And that's it about the piconet and scatternet. So far, we have dealt with well, the basic Bluetooth. the piconet and the scatternet let's now see the bluetooth devices or adapters we have basically many adapters they differ in its size and its functionality in this example i have shown few bluetooth adapters bluetooth can connect fixed devices and mobile devices suppose if we have a desktop computer if we need bluetooth connectivity for that desktop computer what we should do so we can just purchase a bluetooth adapter like this just plug this into the usb port of the desktop computer so that we can have bluetooth connectivity to our desktop computer where our desktop is a fixed device so no matter whether it is a fixed device or a mobile device bluetooth can establish short range communication between fixed and mobile devices now let's see the pros and cons of bluetooth and we know the pros are it's low cost and it's easy to use it can also penetrate through walls but remember it is a short range communication but still it can penetrate through walls and it creates an ad hoc connection immediately without any wires because bluetooth is a wireless technology it is used for voice and data transfers bluetooth speakers and bluetooth headsets have become so popular in today's world bluetooth speakers and bluetooth headset are examples for voice transfers these are the pros of bluetooth Now let's see the cons of bluetooth. The first con is it can be hacked and hence less secure. And the second disadvantage is it has a slow data rate and the third one is it has a small coverage range. It can range up to 10 meters. There is a class of bluetooth which can range up to 100 meters but still it has a very small range when compared to other technologies. Do you know there is a competent technology for bluetooth? It's Zigbee technologies. I'm not going to talk about that Zigbee technologies. If you are new to this, just know that there is a competent technology to Bluetooth, which is Zigbee. The last part of today's lecture is the blue snuffing. Let's see what is blue snuffing. This blue snuffing is an attack. So blue snuffing is the unauthorized access of information from a wireless device through a Bluetooth connection, often between phones, desktops, laptops, and PDAs. So using bluetooth technology if somebody try to hack your network and steal your personal information then this attack is called as the blue snuffing attack what an attacker can do using blue snuffing attack so this blue snuffing attack allows to calendars contacts list emails and text messages and on some phones user can copy pictures and private videos also so ultimately blue snuffing is the theft of information from the target device using unauthorized bluetooth connection and that's it guys i hope now you know the basics of bluetooth we understood piconet and scatternet we have seen the bluetooth adapters we understood the pros and cons of bluetooth and we also have seen an attack called blue snuffing attack i hope you enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching